So welcome to Technodad Life and today what we're going to be doing is showing you how to as quickly as possible make your own media server using Open Media Vault. So today's video has no sponsor so if you'd like to support the channel check out the links in the description below. You can use those at no cost to yourself or you can support me through PayPal. So for today's video, we're gonna need a couple things. We're going to need a USB drive that's at least eight gigabytes. And we're gonna need a computer. This one is a little mini PC that I bought a few years ago. And then we're going to need a Windows PC. And that's what we're gonna be using to download OpenMedia Vault, burn it to our USB drive, and then transfer that to our mini PC here. So the first thing we want to do is go to the Lana Etcher and I'll leave a link in the description below. We're going to download this and then install it. This is the program we're actually going to use to burn our image to our USB drive. Next we want to go to openmediavault.org, go to the download section and so currently, if we look, there's two options here. We have old stable and stable. Old stable currently is OMV5 and stable is OMV6. We want to press on stable and then download that. Once you have Balana Etcher and downloaded and installed and open to mean well downloaded, uh, we need to get our USB drive and then, and then plug that into our computer. Now we want to go to our desktop, click flash file, pick out our current version of OEM, which is OEM 6 here, click open, select target, pick our flash drive, and then select. Now that's going to take a few minutes to write the image to the USB drive and then it will verify it. Then once it's verified, you can pull that out. So for this next part, we're going to plug in our flash drive, plug in an ethernet cable so we're connected to the internet, plug in our USB keyboard, plug in a monitor, and then finally we're going to plug in the power supply. Once all those are plugged in, we can turn it on the computer. And for this, we want to go into the BIOS of the computer. So you have to know which setting for you is the BIOS. And so for this computer, it's the escape key. So I'm going to hit that a bunch of times till it, we get to the uh, boot screen there. So we're going to turn that on and start hitting the escape key. So that took us to the BIOS. We're going to Go over to where it says boot, and we're going to change the boot order so that our USB drive is first. So for mine, what we do is highlight the first thing, go down, hit USB flash drive, hit enter, and that changes the boot over order. We're gonna go over, hit save for save and exit, and then yes again. And that's going to boot into Open Media Vault. So here we can just hit enter. And from here on in, you want to just hit the defaults for your country and time zone. And it's time for a cup of coffee. So here we want to pick out our wired adapter. We don't want to do this wirelessly. We want to use the wired adapter. Mine actually has two wire, or wired adapters on it. So I'm going to guess which one it is here. So it looks like I was wrong the first time. So why don't we try again? So next we want to set the host name, then hit enter, set your root password, do that again. Next we want to set our root storage, and so for me, it has a built-in MMC card, so we're going to use that for our uh, operating system. Okay, so the installation is complete. We need to pull out our USB drive, and then uh, hit enter as it says and then the system will reboot. 
So now, uh, probably what you saw is the computer went through a, the startup process and it takes us to this command prompt. Once it gets to this command prompt, that means we can now go to our com other computer and actually log into Open Media Vault. Oh, so I did forget one thing. So we do want to log in here. So we log in as root and then our password that we put in before. And so what we're going to do is type in IP ADDR and then that will give us our IP address of our computer. And here I'm going to use a magic arrow. It's 192.168.8.190. And now we can pull out the keyboard because we don't need it anymore. So we type in the address that we just got into the address bar 192.168.8.190. One nine zero, and that will take us to the Open Media Vault login page. Type in admin for the username and Open Media Vault for the password. Click login, and so now we'll just go through the login. So we want to click settings. We're going to add in a few things here, and so these so these settings will basically be what will show up on our dashboard. So here you can see that we have the basic information of the system and we can change those anytime we want. If we go up into the top right corner, click on settings and change our dashboard, we can go back and change those if we want. Next, we're going to type on system. So basically what we're going to do is go down this menu on the left and show you the settings and what I think are good settings to start out with so you have a server up and running by the end of this video. So in the system menu, if we just go down here, we click on Workbench. Port 80 is the port that we're going to be accessing Open Media Vault on. We're going to change auto logout to a day so it doesn't keep logging us out all the time. If you want to do a SSL certificate, we would click here and add it there. Then we click Save and then the check mark and then confirm and yes. So there we changed our first setting. If we want to change our login password, we would go up to the circle, click change password, and then set in our new password. So I'm going to suggest you do that at the end of this video. Otherwise, you're going to have to log out and log back in right now. Uh, next, we have date and time, and we want to pick our time zone, then click save, and then the check mark and then confirm and yes. Next we go to notifications and so we have two settings. So the setting to enable you to send emails from your server and who they're sent to and then which notifications uh, that get sent. Next we have power management and so again we have two settings. So in monitoring and so for this it says power button nothing we're going to change this to shutdown and then save. So what that means is if we actually press the power button on the server, that for this instance, it will power it off. You can also press it in for standby or do nothing. Next, if we press on scheduled tasks, we can click on the create button and schedule times for it to reboot, shutdown or standby. Once we change that, then we would click save. Next is monitoring, and that's enabled by default. Scheduled tasks, again, click create. So scheduled tasks, uh, we can run certain commands at different times that we want. Certificates, this is where we would put our SSH certificate or our SSL certificate. Update manager, so we have two settings again for settings. We don't want to change any of these. These are if you want to use pre-release updates or computer community maintain updates. And the second one is for update. And then how you would update is you would click install updates and then confirm and yes. So next are plugins. And so basically there's a whole bunch of plugins where you can add extra features to Open Media Vault. So what we're gonna do is install one plugin and then we're gonna install OMB Extras to include all the community created plugins. So we click on plugins. We're going to go over to search, click on that, type in Weddy. 
So what this does is it gives us terminal access from a browser window. And then click close, and then the check mark, and then confirm. Now if we click on services, now we have the Wedi terminal. We click on Wedi, we click enable, and then we click save, and check mark, and yes. And then we click open UI, and that will take us to the Wedi terminal, which we'll get back to in a second. We're going to search for OMB extras, type, go to OMB extras, scroll down and so we're going to copy this line and this will install OMV extras go back to Weddy, log in as root and your password hit enter and then paste that line and then hit enter and that's going to install the open media ball extras with the extra plugins we can close that, go back up to System. Now we have OpenVIA Extras. But first, let's go to Plugins. And so now we have Extra Plugins. So there's a variety of plugins. So let's just take a few, look at a few of these. So we have some Shutdown, Backup, Virus Protection. If we want CPU temps, disk stats, there is a downloader here, but we will install some downloaders through Docker in another video, flash memory plugin. So the flash memory plugin I suggest installing. So what it does is it takes the system, puts it into RAM, so there's less writes to your disk. So we're gonna do that right now. So then we press it, click download, confirm, and yes. And once that's done, click close. That will refresh the dashboard, click system, and again, plugins. And now if we go down, we can see that plugin is installed there. And if we go over to services, the plugin is installed there and it starts automatically. Other things are media server, a kernel if we want to use Proxmox, KVM, different hard drive setups, uh, backing up to OneDrive, photo application, remote mount, reset perms. And we're going to set this one up. And so reset perms is just a quick way to reset permissions if you've messed things up. Very handy. Once that's done, click close. We go down to services. We have reset permissions. And so basically there's two options. You can reset the permission on a folder. Uh, change what re permissions are and you can clear ACLs. And this one shows shared folders in use, but we haven't got that far yet. Uh, two, two more plugins that I suggest installing are share root file system. So this plugin makes it so that you can use the rest of your storage on your root file system disk. So say you have a SSD where you have 256 gigabytes, only eight of that is going to be used for the root file system and the other part's not going to be used. With this plugin, you can use that extra part on that disk for storage. So symlinks, so when we're using Docker, so we need to write down the big long uh, name of our disk, which is a bunch of numbers and letters for it to use in Docker files. If we use symlink, we can use shortened names to refer to things. Okay, next we have the OMV extras and it has a few things in it. So we have settings. Here it lets us pick which repo it's using. I would just stick with that. Docker installs Docker, Portainer installs Portainer and we're going to do that. We'll click install. And so when Portainer installs, it actually installs Docker too. So you don't have to do both. Once that's loaded, you can click Open Web. That will take you to the Portainer login screen. And then finally on the screen, we have Yacht. So Yacht is a program that helps you install Dockers. Uh, it, is easy, it is easy to install software with it, or it is easy to install Dockers with it, uh, but it does take a little setup, which we're not going to do today. I'll do that in another video. So finally, we're out of the system tab. We're going to go up to network, click on general. 
this is the name of our host. If we want to change it here, we type in a new name, click Save. Interfaces shows us the information about our network interfaces. Proxy, if we want to establish a proxy, and firewall, we would set up firewall rules here. Storage is where the good stuff happens. So we're going to find our disk. So here is our system disk. We can see this is only 57 gigabytes. And then we have a SSD installed. We're going to click on that. We're going to click wipe and confirm and yes. And so quick should be good enough. If quick doesn't work, there's some type of error. Do the secure erase, let it run for about 10 minutes and you can stop it and then quick will run uh, for you. Uh, or you can just do the secure one, which will take hours to complete. Once we've done that, we can click on our drive again, click the edit button. And if we have spinning hard drives, we can do power management, acoustic management, spin down and enable write caching. Now we're going to click on smart and we have settings for that. We would turn it on by enabling and then save. So smart checks for disk errors. Next we'll click on devices and we can pick out a device and here you can see its status is good. We can also edit it, enable monitoring and click save. Software RAID lets us create a RAID array. If we have more than one disk, we can stripe, mirror, linear, RAID 10, 5, or 6. You would select your devices here and then click save. I only have one hard drive attached to this computer, so I can't do RAID. Next, we're going to create a file system. Click on file system, click create, pick a device. There's our terabyte hard drive, click save. And then it's time for another cup of coffee. So it takes us right to the mount tab. Click on your file system and then save. Yes. After that save, we can create a shared file. So we'll click on shared file, click the plus. Give it a name of data. Select our file system. You want the big one. So on this folder, we're going to change the permissions to everyone read write so we have easy access to this folder on our network. Now, I know I'm going to get lots of mean comments in the uh, comments below, but we're doing this because we're not exposing this computer to the internet. If you're going to be exposing your computer to the internet, do not do this. Next, we'll click on services. So we have our shared folder, but it's not available on our network yet. And for that to happen, we have to uh, enable it in Samba. So we're going to scroll down to SMB SIFS, click on that, click settings, and click enable. And so the work group is your local Windows group. Scroll down and click save and then check mark and yes. So now we want to share our folder. So we'll click on shares and then the plus mark. And so it's enabled. We're going to click on our share that we created. Click on public and we're going to say guests allowed again to make it as easy as possible to use on our local network. Scroll down and click save. Then check mark and yes. Now let's go to our network, see if we can find that share and see if we can add or delete things to it. So open our Explorer, go to network. There is our share, double click that. And there's our data folder, double click that. Now it's open, let's right click, create a new folder and let's see if we can delete it. Yes, so we can add and delete things there. So let's create a Docker folder. We'll use that folder in a video coming up. Next click, let's click on users. And we have a few settings here. So we have settings. If we want to enable a home directory, we can do that. If we click on users, we can add users. So we'll create a Docker user. We have to give them a password, uh, select what groups they're part of. And so they're going to be part of users and Docker. And then we're going to click Save. 
in this part there's a lot of clicking check marks and saying yes to things but once it's set up it pretty much runs itself after that so then groups we can add groups or import them name a group select the members and then click save diagnostics system information has the system how long it's been up for system logs and we can pitch, pick which log we want remote logging current processes running services there's our information ssh reports reports and performance and we can do that by cpu disk and so on so now you have a working open media vault server that you can share on your network uh, in the future stay tuned because we'll be doing more docker videos i've done them in the past but we're going to be updating them for open media vault 6. you have a great day bye bye